Okay, the first thing we need to do in order to install a Windows subsystem so that we can run Linux on top of our Windows is go to this website, docs.microsoft.com, and copy this a line, which we're going to run in PowerShell. So we type PowerShell here, and we have to run it as administrator. Find the window and paste it and run it. And that will be the first step. That completes. Successful. Now we go to the second step. Now, the second step is making sure our version is right and uh, maybe we want to update. But, um, we don't want to do this right now. Let's skip to the third step and we'll also copy. Uh, another PowerShell script, run it in PowerShell. Wait for that to be successful. Okay, that was successful. And now we go to the forward stage to actually download the kernel of Linux. Okay, now that we have uh, downloaded the kernel update package for our PC computer, we're going to go to our downloads directory, find it, and run it. Now we're going to do next. And this is installing the Windows subsystem for Linux. And now we're going to have to set it as our default. So we're copying this line, and we're also going to run it in PowerShell as administrator. Get the window, paste it, run it by entering, hitting enter. And now we have set our default version in Windows. Now we have to install the Linux distribution that we want, and we can choose any one of these that you see before you. Ubuntu is the most common for uh, regular users. There's Debian, there's Fedora, OpenSUSE. Let's try Ubuntu the most recent version. And we got to go to the Microsoft Store. Don't worry, it's not going to cost anything. We get it. has to download, take some time. This is like a whole operating system we're downloading now. So it's gonna take a lot of time to download and it's starting. And uh, okay, downloading Ubuntu. And I'm gonna cut this video so that it doesn't have to take so long for you guys and we finish downloading. Now it's installing. And I'm just going to close this window. And I'm going to go and run it. And it says installing. This may take a few minutes. Now I can make up a name. I'll use my name, Danzig and a password. Don't forget your password. Write it down on paper or so you don't forget because it's important. You need it. And this is a password for your Linux version that is running on top of your Windows. Now we're going to put it to the taskbar so that I can find it easier later. And there I have that little button. And now I can just run it every time. When I press that, it opens the window. I can do LS, I can do PWD, I'm in Linux on my Windows machine, I can do CD. I'm on a, a different, di uh, a different, I'm on a different file system. So in order to have the same file system or be able to access across the two file systems, I'm gonna go to Visual Studio Code and download this Visual Studio Code user setup. and run it. This is going to allow me to access the files across the two operating systems on the same computer. This is also uh, you know, Visual Studio Microsoft.
accept the agreement. Next. Now I'm going to save this. Now you could browse and save it somewhere else, but actually the best thing for me to do, I have a separate hard drive, so I'm going to put it on D. Just change the initial letter and I'll save it there it, with the same path, Visual Studio Code. I'll just leave these defaults and install. Now, okay, as you see, it's extracting all the files, it's installing. Again, the point here is to be able to access the files on the, on the Ubuntu from Windows and vice versa. Okay, finished. Ah, it detects that I have WSL, so I want to install. That's the whole point now. It knows because it's all it's all by Microsoft. Whatever it works together, it knows. I install it. It knows that there's WSL there, and now when I open the window, let's see what happens. Right, I got to open up a new window. Actually, the old window won't be updated yet. I have to type code dot, and that uh, tells the Ubuntu, it runs a script in Ubuntu to connect it outside to the Windows. You can only do that after you install the, the Visual Studio code. Now, I'm going to make a file. Well, I can start with just a simple text file. And there you go. I see it. Well, that's the file in, in, in Ubuntu. And it's empty, but I'm editing it here. in uh, Visual Studio. And in Ubuntu, I see that the edit that I changed came up. Now, if I want to edit the file in Linux, put in my password, and now I can type in hello from, from Ubuntu. I can save the file. I have to save it and go back to Visual Studio and I see hello from Ubuntu. So you see I can access the files across the platforms. Uh, that's the whole point really because otherwise everything would just be local and I would be able to print something. I would be able to, now there's now the file exists in the Windows world. I can email it. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to set up Ubuntu to also, you know, Ubuntu is, is cut off from the world except to the Windows environment. Now I'm going to make a little uh, program just to show that I can write a program in C. So this is actually no good. I don't want a text.text. .text. I want a C file. So let's, what should we do? Let's just make a new file. Get rid of this one. No, I don't want to save it. And Make a new file. That means new file. And I have to give it a .c ending so that it will be recognized in, as a C file. Also in Windows, also in Linux, you have to do that. So now I have hello.c. This is all being done in Linux, in, in Windows. But when I come to Linux and I see hello C is there, hello.c. So you see every as instantly gets uh, rec recognized when I create it. Well, because it gets saved at creation. Now I'm going to make um, my simple program. Print F is in C. C, how you print things. Don't forget a semicolon. Notice how it indents. It color codes. I've got all. The, I've got these features of uh, Visual Studio. And I can still work in Linux. I can as the actual compiling I will do over here also. So first I'll cap the file. I'll see what it is, and I'll see that it is in. Uh, why didn't that work? Because I didn't save it. Okay. Save. Now you see the file was there, but it hadn't been saved. Now it has all the content. Yofi. Wonderful.
Now I want to compile it with GCC. Ah, oh, GCC not found, but it can be installed with sudo apt install GCC. So I'll just copy that, and I'll have to install GCC, which is the compiler, into uh, my machine. And it goes, goes, goes into my Linux machine, right? I need a compiler. Uh, but I have some kind of unable to fetch some archives. And it says run apt get update. So I'll do that. apt sudo, right? You got to run this as a super user. So sudo, and that's the way Ubuntu works, right? sudo minus, to be really super user, to have all this environment, uh, apt get, well, I'll just cop type it real fast here. Okay. Well, here it was without the minus, also will work. Fine. Um, and now, Hopefully, I'll make further progress. Done. Looks like it succeeded. That was the update. Now I install again after the update, and the install should work. See, the first was the update. So let's finish this. Looks like it's finishing, finished. There, I got a prompt, see? Now I can run GCC, and it ran, it found it. It says file not found, there's no files. I didn't give it a file name, but it, it found the program. Also, I need to include here, and in the in, I need to put an include here so that the printf will work. Printf, it has to have the right library. Uh, so I will add in the library, which is stdio, input output, standard input output, H, so it's a header file, and now I should save it and go back to Linux to compile it. Uh, GCC, ignore those man, those man statements. GCC, hello dot C, that's it. And now if I want to run it, dot slash A dot out, and it ran and printed hello. Now, I don't like that the hello is on the same line. So I'll go back and put a backslash N inside the quotation marks, lowercase n it should be, and save it again. That is a little bit annoying. You have to save it every time. Um, That's because it's not in the operating, it's not in the uh, application. I'm now outside of the application. So if I don't save it, how can the outside world know? And then now I just want to add a backslash n so I get a new line. So I'll save it again. And go back to Ubuntu, Linux. And if I just run it, it's going to be the same. i got to compile it. And now I can run it. And now I see I have a new line. And there we go. You can 